He, we, when we started building that road up there, now I had nothing to do with the road. I was too busy working on that rock crusher trying to make sure this other bitch worked. <laughs> but uh, when they, had, they were still in the caves around there shooting, you know. And the guys would work in the daytime, but they couldn't work at night because the Japs would shoot the lights out. And it, it, there was no moon. It was, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Yeah, the Catholic chaplain come up there, uh, the bishop come up there, you know, archbishop or whatever he was. And he says, I can't see where these boys are shooting any man. But that, well, what I meant to tell you was that that camp coming along there, uh, in the cemetery, I built, I built a, a room about twice, well, about the size of our apartment, and we put a 10-foot fence up there, two, two five-foot fences, posts in. And uh, when he finally got a prisoner, they put him in there. And uh, this Marine sergeant come walking by, and I still remember the tune he was singing. He was singing, whistling, uh, Dixie. Walks up there, looking around like this, and flipped a hand grenade over the fence, and we had no prisoner. <laughs> I think that's when we got turned in. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, this was the worst place. Uh, building for the Air Corps, see. But it's still salt water, even it was heated up by the sun. Yeah, this is some more. This is how it was looking we, when we tore into it and started built, leveling it down for construction, you know. In the runway, still snipers in the area, 345. See, it's the north end of the island, deadly some of the hardest fighting, but some of the hardest fighting in here and uh, one day we had almost a thousand men killed and wounded. Yeah, this is, I think this is Joe Eichus' building. Anyway, yeah, Mike's special project. It was while he was building his, he was hit by a hundred and twenty mile an hour hurricane, <laughs> and it knocked everything down. He had to rebuild it. <laughs> Boy, he was mad, and he, he smoked the cigars. You see those cigars, uh, black uh, tobacco, like, like a dried up dog turd? Well, that's what he smoked. This, this is looking down uh, at the landscape where, where they were flying in. And this is a good picture of the inside of, of the uh, worn out volcano. Here's some more buildings, and I think they're writing on the bag. But. This was our camp area, and the putting the work crew together. And this is looking down on Suribachi again. Looking down on Suribachi, northeast, west, built the 7th Fighter Command headquarters. Between there and the top was still snipers. And of course there's this, then the shot of that group in the church, the religious services. I remember the guy coming over saying, it's time for you Mormons to get back to work. You're holding the war up. <laughs> well, you know, and I swore that things would never, yeah, that's a B-29 landing. Crippled B-29 coming in for landing. Some of the eighth NCB, NCB work. We traded back and forth with the 8th Battalion on a lot of work. We had guys that could do the things, and they had guys that could do some of the stuff that we had, see. This is Joe Eichus, Mike Evancho with folded arms. Third man is David Eshelman. Uh, man kneeling is Gilbert Hay Ethington. Carpenters make first class. I borrowed the redwood to make out the benches. Oh, that's a story in itself. I uh, I loaded up, I took four truck loads up, and loaded up redwood, two for the job. I took two of them home and we got a couple, our first days off, we, we started making benches. We made everybody in our units tent a bench. Yeah, and I kept getting, expecting a, beer, uh, uh, a bill for years later, you know, for the Navy, for, you know, for about four million board feet of lumber that I, didn't account for it, I signed for it. 
a lot of that stuff don't mean anything to anybody, but it means a lot to me. I, I spent as much time on my belly at first as I did somebody. I said, you son of a bitch, if you think I'm going to get myself killed, you're crazy. But when, on the D-16, we had Dodd on there, and he's just starting to cut into the runway up there. And for days, the battleships and I had been shelling the island. And some of the, some of the shells buried themselves, 16 shells buried themselves, but they didn't go off, see. And we were uncovering this ledge there, and he's in that big cat, and we're out there, and we see that 16-inch shell tumbling along in there, and he's waving back at us. <laughs> Dad, we're screaming our heads off, jumping up and down, because that thing was afraid it was going to go off right away. <laughs> Finally, he got him to stop. He got down, jumped off, Walks around the front, and he saw that 16 inch shell there, and he fainted dead away. <laughs> I just never remember him just dropping on his back. <laughs> so it had to come from one of our battle wagons. <laughs> He's always joking with him, playing with him, you know. After that, old Dodd, when we said something, he listened. <laughs> Here's a picture of CBs at work. and. Uh, there's another shot of the runway. This here was... Yeah, this is Mike and me, and, and this one here was making a decision of what to do. In other words, I think, I think we were really bullshitting. <laughs> it was like heaven after we got mm -hmm. him up. Here's the 43rd. Chow Hall we put up for the, this, this is our tent area here. We poured the concrete pad, 16 foot square, put the 16 inch tents up. We put a wood frame in there eventually, uh, halfway up and then, yeah, just stiffen it. And that when the typhoon comes along, why well, it just ripped everything all to pieces. <laughs> Another quasit under construction. Walking on the right. And this is the Navy hospital we, we finally put them in, you know. And they, they, they sure did wonders, let me tell you. This is quite a workshop. Yeah, this is the Link Trainer building I was putting up for them. And we got it built. They let us sit in the trainers. They were supposed to get length trainer time, and they want to go to the officers' club, and so we'd sign in. They'd sign in for us, and we'd go. And I, I was on that length trainer, and God, I'm flying along there just perfect. I said, Jesus, this is no trouble at all. I can fly a plane and nothing flat. And I still remember <laughs> that Navy chief says to me, he says, you know. You are a wonderful pilot, but you're only 2,000 feet below sea level. <laughs> I never will forget that. I was sure hard on my ego, and of course, everybody kidding me about that for a long time. That's the pill, that's one of those pillboxes. Believe it or not, it was covered clear up to here, and it opened here, and that. But when we needed to level things out, we just we just took all that and spread it out. This is our marine friend. I can't remember his name anymore. Another picture at work. And Iwo Jima, 700 miles from Japan, looking southeast. Yeah, here we are. These were a bunch of real guys, let me tell you. And, and now the names have faded, and even some of the faces are fading. I can't, I don't know if it's me or Here's one of my work crews right here. Oh, Mike Mancho and Dave Eshelman, yeah. They sure got along together. He, was, he worked for Sears in their building supply department, plumbing supply. He was a plumber by trade. 